So then we are back with the modern understandings from the time of the second tabernacle services, during the time of the prophets of Yahweh, during the time of the prophets of Israel. So then we evaluate these documents as per the time of the Hebrew scripture. So then we can then remind ourselves of what the Messiah has said in the 24th chapter of Medjitiahu or then the first gospel. Let's then try to have these information as per the original manuscripts rather than from nations trying then to translate the manuals. So then, our quest then starts when nations other than the Hebraic people trying to translate documents from its original state. We understand the Hebraic language is very unique because it is truly the language of the Creator Himself. The Creator Himself, He wrote, the Creator Himself spoke the Hebrew language. So then, it is very imperative for us understanding from the viewpoint of a Hebraic culture. So then, these days where we find many opinions and many ways of describing the scripture, it is always valid for us then to be prudent and evaluating the scriptures as they are. The most popularly read scripture is then from Greco-Roman translation. Have these in mind. The records given and translated and then distributed are from the transitional time. So then let's evaluate what goes on. The Messiah then when he came, he came and he completed the spring feast. There is a section in Leviticus where you find then a very specific understanding regarding the feasts, the feasts of Yahweh. Those feasts they were then divided in two sections, spring feast and autumn feast. So the whole base of time in the earth and then scripture, they were linked together with Leviticus 23rd chapter. There were then the feasts themselves, and then the shadow prophetic events of the future. When you read the 10th chapter of Hebrews, and the reason why you have Hebrews in the scripture, it's because Shaliak Shaul, during the time of a transition, gave the Levitical priests a record of the updates of the existing laws so they could perform their duties in the second tabernacle services. Yet, this scripture then was placed on paper and then given to those much later to themselves to study themselves. During the time of Shaliak Shaul, back then it was very popular writing then on skin of animals. So then, the Levitical priests then they did acquaint themselves with those updates and they practiced them. However, the practice of these updates were only done after the first holy city. There are the steps of formation. So then, in terms of the end of the world, it is very important understanding only the Creator's calendar. It is extremely important. There are, for instance, many leaders around the world, and unfortunately they were born during the time where then the scripture is given as time of deceit. Per se, they don't have a fault in themselves for being born during this time. However, as they studied the Holy Scripture, they were giving then copies from a pagan viewpoint or then from other countries' translations, other than Hebrew. Yet, they were then receiving copies from a transitional time and not the actual relationship of Gentiles and set apart. If you want to receive a Scripture, from the proper time, you would have to have a copy of the Alexandrian library burned down by the order of Constantine. 
Try to understand the context. In terms of Constantine, he was involved in many situations and some of them were the influences of the holy cities. When was then Constantine born? He was born during the time of the 200s. 200, give and take another 50 years. During this time, you can understand there was a very important library of the time was the Alexandrian Library. So from the time of Yohanan and on, then there is the proper relationship of then the set apart and also the Gentiles. What we have today popularly is only the transitional time scripture. These scriptures, they are not valid for Gentiles. They are only valid for set apart. The only Gentiles involved during the time of the transition is simply those set of people related in person with the Hebraic people in a relationship. Then they were given guidelines. These guidelines were for them, in quote, to behave themselves because they were involved with the people delegated responsibilities from heaven to function. Seven spirits of Yahweh, seven functions. That's where you find the mistakenly known as gifts of the Spirit. They don't exist. They do exist functions. However, from Gentile to Gentile, the only section of it where there is a relationship is after Yohanan, a hundred years after the ascension of the Messiah. Then we start the relationship with the Gentiles before the set apart. So then, when we read in Revelation the 20th chapter the thousand years given to his people, that they would be given directives, those times are gone. It was until 1009. When 1009 came, then the city of Jerusalem was leveled and the tomb destroyed. The world made a declaration they have nothing to do with the Messiah. Thus, then the fast of, of destroyer of Nehashtan or Satan went to prison. That's where the time when you read then, and then the angel came down from heaven with a chain and bound him in the pit. That's your first understanding of destruction of a pit. It is spiritual. So then, started then the time of deceit. Speaking of a Messiah outside of the holy tabernacles. Nonsense from a Hebraic viewpoint. So then, we are then returning to the time of the cities. So what has the Messiah then indicated to his people regarding the time of the end? Let's read what the Messiah said himself. So then, we read in the 24th chapter of Metichiahu words from the Messiah. So then, before he started in this section, the Messiah was then in the temple teaching the people. And as usual, people would get excited with his teachings because he was anointed. And they liked him very much and they wanted him to become king over them as Shilimon was the king of Israel. Normal factor would say from a viewpoint of a person liking, for instance, a religious and a politician at the same time. Because he was considered and he was a king and pleased. So then, there he was, he went out outside of the temple and he departed and his disciples drew near and were showing him the construction of the temple. As they would say, we can do whatsoever we can to make you a king. The Mishi was not interested. So then, but he said, Behold, don't you observe these? Truly, he was saying to them, Absolutely no stone or any of these areas is going to be spared. And he was explaining why. Not one stone will to be left upon another, and they shall be thrown down. What he was trying to say in the spirit was, don't try to make this world your own kingdom. They did not understand what the Messiah was explaining.
They wanted the earthly kingdom. The Messiah was speaking of the future kingdom to come. His disciples were then in the earthly level, and the Messiah was speaking of the heavenly level. So then he continues, and then afterwards, then he explained what so many areas of this end of time as he was then on the Mount of Olives. And while Yeshua was then on the Mount of Olives, his disciples then drew near and were saying among themselves and said to him, Could you please say to us what will be like then at the end of the world? So then the Messiah explained and said to them, Be aware. First he said, Be aware. Why did he say, Be aware? Because first, his disciples or the Shilishim, first they want himself as king over them as Shilimon or Solomon was during the old times. So the whole conversation as they left the temple already started in the wrong pace. Try to understand the context. The Messiah was in the temple and he was the truth, he was the living Torah. There was no person during his time that knew the Torah more than himself. He was the living Torah. Or the living instructions, the Creator himself speaking. So then, he departed and then his disciples or the Shilishim drew near and they were showing him around as they were excited. Why don't you then come around and be our king? King and priest, whatsoever you say, then we do, because we want the kingdom of Shilimon restored. And they went on, and they were excited because of the kingdom of Shilimon. So then later the Messiah said, be aware of, be aware, he was saying, well, whatsoever you are thinking where you are at, be aware, because it's not you what you are thinking. So he started with the word, be aware. Let no person deceives you. Let no man, males, mostly were doing the teaching back then. For many will come in my name and will say, He or she, the Messiah, don't believe it. And many will and will be deceived. So then, for you are then set for hearing of revolutions and rumors of war. Watch out, do not be disturbed. He is explaining there is a time yet in the future where is coming then the restoration. Because the linking of watch out and not be disturbed has to be linked with areas yet not discovered, however pointing out of a future certainty of a restoration. Okay? Watch out and do not be disturbed. You have to have your then mind in the future where the events are going to take place as he said yet behind those disasters rumors of war, pestilences and earthquakes must have a piece of truth behind it in order for yourself not to be disturbed so he was then in terms of this conversation there was a piece of truth behind the disaster so then, for it is required that you then go through these situations, but the time is not yet. So the Messiah is already explaining. But then how do we interpret these as per the layers of prophetic understanding? So then, during the 6th and 7th verses, we find precisely the gap where then Yerushiahu, the 61st chapter, fits. The time of restoration, and then later Jerusalem with the reconstruction of the temple. But then he continues. However, the seventh until the end, you find then the explanations regarding the previous layer where he started speaking of the revolutions in rumors of wars. So then you begin to structurize as if you would take words from a piece of paper and you'd make a structure on the top of the previous. It's a form of layering understanding not known in any other language other than Hebrew. 
Okay, so then, let's do this again. The Mishia was explaining and he said, For you are then bound to hear of revolutions and rumors of wars. Watch out, do not be disturbed. He is saying there is a truth behind it that you must have in your mind because behind those disasters there is a section of truth yet to be completed. So try to understand what he was trying to say. For it is required that these situations take place, but the time is not yet. So then what you understand is, there is a section of not yet that we must know. And what is it? Yerushiach, the 61st chapter, time of restoration. This is what the Mishia is explaining. Because the Mishia is taking them through an area where then the temple, living Torah, explaining. Then you find the people trying to reverse it and to make him a king and priest. He was not interested. But he was pointing them to the fact of the end of the world. While the Messiah said then, be aware. What you want can't be done, but listen to this. And he explains it. So then we continue. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and will be famines, plagues, earthquakes in many places, but these are only the starting points. What is he saying starting points? He is speaking of then obviously preparing the people for the autumn feast. So you have many contexts of layers related with each other but then you have to structurize them properly you can't read in flat surfaces so then when you are reading from sixth and seventh at the end of the sixth verse and starting of the seventh that's where it fits then Yerushiach the 61st chapter okay and then when you start reading the seventh the seventh and then the 8th and ninth, and then the 10th and the 11th and the 12th until you find another layer such as verse 1 4 these previous chapter from 1 4 until 7 they are related with the previous of the 6 so you have then a layer from the 6th and then the Messiah said but the time is not yet. When he is explaining the time is not yet, it is related with yourself not being disturbed. When you read then at the end of the 6th, don't be disturbed. And then when he said to you that the time is not yet, because this is only then the starting of a point in history, he is giving you then layers of understanding of the verses. But then you would have to be taught how to read in layers. So then continue on. Then these will be then given to many trials and tribulations. And you will be then hated for many because of his name. And then he goes on and on and on and he explains then later the most important section of it, and these great news of the kingdom will be taught in the world as a testimony to the nations, then the end will come. So then, then he speaks of the sign of the unclean, speaking of the pig that was roasted on the altar. We understand this factor. And then what was spoken by the Daniel the prophet, regarding then the set apart. And then he explains, and woe to the pregnant women, and he's speaking of the time prior then of the burning of the pig. So then you have to understand another layer as you go on as history and prophecy taking place at the same time. Okay? Then he said, For they will be in great trial such as was never before in the world until the present. And if those days were not shortened, not any flesh would then survive. But then he is changing the situation. You have to understand another layer on top of it. Because he explained from the time of Daniel, 
when the sign of the unclean or desolation, then you have to return to the Roman history when then they invaded the land and they roasted a pork on the top of the altar, unclean. So then he goes until the explanation of this time goes on and on and on until you find the most important topic then it is in the 21st verse. Then you find afterwards and if those days were not shortened not any flesh would survive. And he's explaining, he's making a comparison of the time that the people fled from Jerusalem when the pork was then roasted on the altar. It was a riot. And then he's making a comparison with these, how it's going to be then when the end comes as far as when the days are shortened and after. So then we begin to understand if those days were not shortened, nor any flesh would then survive. He's explaining is this. When we then shift to the 6th and 7th verses where Yerushiahu, the 61st chapter, fits, then you understand the returning of the holy cities. The first city is then the land of Cush, as per Yerushiahu or Isaiah chapter 1-8. You find then tabernacling is a very important Hebrew word amongst the fierce, and the fierce people, the Africans, are used as a filtering system making sure the city, the first city built as per the specifications of Yohanan's time. So then we understand. So then we understand this factor and the time being reduced. Why then the time is being reduced? Because prior of the vengeance his people must be protected in the holy cities so then the whole Torah is a hundred percent perfectly kept, so then vengeance can start. So then, we understand the Messiah came and he completed the spring feast. The computer was then able to find the date of his birth as the first day of the feast of Sukkah or Tabernacles. That's why he tabernacled with us. But the word us is speaking from a Hebraic reader. Myself, Gentile, my relationship before this scripture is simply as an example. My relationship with the set apart is with the city. A Hebraic person reading this because these scriptures were meant for the set apart as they are transitioning themselves, that's how they read. So then, he completed the spring feast and then later is coming the autumn feast. When did he spend time with the Samaritans? The Samaritans he spent time in 5031. He was born in 4999 of the Creator's calendar. We are in 7012 per the Creator's calendar. You can use the Gregorian calendar if you want, but then you have your mind screwed up and you can't understand the layer of prophetic and time in the earth at the same time. But when you use the Creator's calendar, years becomes a whole lot easier. The great start of Bethlehem was recorded, and this recording was then placed on paper, and the computer then able to read this astronomical fact, and then was also able to read every month the sliver of the lunar view. The computer calculates 30 days, plus then the eclipses during the time of the Messiah's ministry, precisely 490 days. So then, you find yourself then visiting with the Messiah, and he spent time with Samaritans, 5031. He was born in 4999. He was placed on a pole, 5032. So he spent time with the Samaritans roughly, if you consider then 490 days is a bit over a year, then 5031. Two days meant a thousand years each, giving them the prophetic understanding 2,000 years of a Gentile ruling in the earth secularly. 
not divinely because Samaritans they were not divine they were Gentiles so then the Messiah already established the time set in the earth 5031 2000 years is then 7031 that's the end so then whatsoever you read in the scripture must fit up to 7031 scripturized speaking there are many Gentiles they are going to ignore what the Messiah has to say and then they would fit in a category in Luke where you read then those who were during the time of Noah unawares of the waters coming or Lot during the time of the shower of sulfur those are going to be lost but prophetic wise and then scripture wise speaking time and prophecy ends in 7031 we are in 7012 so there is a lot of time yet because we are speaking of uh, first second and third layers of understanding the first is the 2000 the Messiah gave it to the Samaritans indicating Gentile ruling in the earth for 2000 years ending 7031 Revelation 20th chapter gives us that in a thousand years his people would give directives, the other thousand, Satan, would give the directives. The first thousand ended in a thousand and nine with the destruction of the tomb and the holy city. And the cities of Yahweh Yeshua were destroyed by then. Then came the time of the seat from a thousand and nine to two thousand and nine. Then afterwards became a huge changing of political situations in the world. At the moment 2009 ended per the Creator's calendar, then would be obviously, we are speaking in regular calendar 2009, would be then 7009, then we've entered an area of reduction of time from 7031 and no person knows for how long. But we know for sure from 7031, the Creator Himself, He is establishing a reduction of time because must fit of Yahweh said would then reducing of the time. It has to reduce. What does it mean this reduction of time? Is a time prior of the starting of the vengeance. Autumn feast is the other half of the Torah, the prophets and the writings, the other 490 days. So do you understand then what it means Leviticus? You have a set of feasts completes a year's worth of feasts. Have this in mind. Year worth of feasts so then you can understand spring and autumn, spring and autumn, spring and autumn. The whole year is then composed with these couple of sets of feasts autumn feast spring feast then you understand the spring feast was completed 490 days half of it the other half is the other 490 days so when you understand this prophetic shadow what you are reading is only a shadow prophetic you understand half of the Torah half of the prophets half of the writings were completed the autumn feast in the future is the other 490. So these numbers, when you begin to shift your mind and understand time and prophecy, those are the prophetic events spoken of by Shaliak Shaul in the 10th chapter of Hebrews. So what does it say? Any other calendar giving you the end of the world prior to 731 is not true. Because we are during the time where the Messiah is spoken in the 24th chapter, be aware, don't let yourself be disturbed. We are during this time where we find in front of our faces pestilences, famines, wars, rumors of wars, and so on and so forth. And behind it, the Messiah said, don't be disturbed. We are during this time of do not be disturbed. Because the time of the end is not yet. So then, we find later more events coming on where then the holy cities are going to be re established. It's not new, it's re establishment of the cities. So they are going to give directives as they used to give directives 
after the time of Yohanan. Yohanan, we understand by John, the beloved, a disciple or Shaliak, he was not on the island of Patmos. He was on the mainland. Because he had visions. Visions are only given in a holy city, and then outside of the cities must be dream, and dreams must be interpreted. Thus, when you read Yoel or Joel, you understand, at the end of times, the old people would have dreams and visions. There is a distinction. How could he be then on the island that was a prison and having visions? Doesn't make any sense. You have to be in a holy city. So then we understand this factor. And also, then later when the cities they come, there is a special relationship with nations and the holy cities. So there is a time yet of harmony besides the rumors of wars and wars, pestilences and famines. There is yet a time of harmony where people, they are going to be facing these, but they have the proper understanding to tackle these problems, and they will be resolved, for the most part, for a time. So there is a whole lot more coming in the future, and we should not be disturbed. So then, we understand that the very end is 7031. So we have yet 20 years ahead of us. Roughly 20 years. So quite a bit of time. So then the people should be then taught and pointed out and shown to them that there is yet a time set and given as the Messiah has promised. So please stay tuned, much more coming up, and don't be concerned with any other calendar such as Mayan, Hindu, or any other, or Gregorian, or Julian calendar. Those are not part of the Creator's calendar, prophetic, and time in the Earth's relation. They have no relation whatsoever. So they are not valid. The only valid is from the Hebrew, because Hebrew comes then what the Creator has encoded in His own scripture in the Torah, so then in the future people would be acquainted. Where is this encoding? The encoding is the 10th chapter of Hebrews. The shadow prophetic events to come was explained Leviticus the 23rd chapter. It was encoded in Leviticus the 23rd chapter and so much of the world is unaware of it. But people are becoming more aware of this factor. And people are uncoding what it means at 23rd chapter of Leviticus. And sometimes it's so simple, but it was guarded so properly and so diligently, where we can find ourselves then in during this time doing precisely what the Messiah told us to do. And we as Gentiles understanding from the Messiah's viewpoint is extremely important. Because then we understand it, 24th chapter is true what the Messiah said. So please don't be concerned with the Mayan calendar, with the December 21st. It doesn't even come close to the Creator's calendar. Because the most important transitional time in terms of prophecy and time in the earth is 2009. 2009 was the time where the Nahashtan's thousand years then was finished. We are over those 2009. We are in, in 2012. We are already 36 months ahead and there is no relation with it. So some people ask, what about this alignment and so on and so forth? There was a mistake done by Nahashtan or Satan. He made a mistake. He was obviously watching the stars, watching the uh, astronomy, and he wanted to come up with a rough understanding of what would be coming in the future. Because he was acquainted with the old prophecies. He did not even know how to tackle from this time on, because there was so much confusion back then of this new kingdom to come and cities, and he didn't know what to do. So what was then the time that we can take these 36 months is when Yohanan, the beloved, or then John, the beloved, went into the city and the gates were then were closed. 
This was the time that Nahash Tandin was in standby. He does not have any interest in what's going on in the holy city. He has to remain outside. Because the holy city is Yahweh's place. And there he was. He waited outside for 36 months. Have this in mind. Yohanan was a disciple. He was John the Beloved. He watched the Messiah. He was with the Messiah. He learned from the Messiah. He was the very living Torah walking around. Then when Yohanan was in the city, he had the copies of the words of the Messiah. He had the copy of the words of the Shilishim. Every Shilishim, Peter for instance, Paul, and those Megillas were gathered then from congregations, and those congregations, they were to be cities. So they have a lot of people then with those holy manuscripts around. Yohanan gathered them, and he entered the city. He had to organize the entire Torah from the start until the end in order to have a model of the city around the world and how they should treat the nations. He was in the city for 36 months, organizing, recruiting people as Ruach HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit pointed those people from outside of the city into the city for further teaching. He was in the city for 36 months. And Ahashtan, Satan, was outside. He did not have any idea what was going on during this time. When Yohanan went out of the city, and then you read in the tenth chapter of Revelation, he gave then the understanding. He received an order from heaven and said, You have to go outside yet and teach the kingdoms and nations and peoples what is coming regarding the vengeance. Thus he received the third role. The first role was the relinking of his people, then the relation with the Gentiles, obviously, and then the vengeance. He went out only once. He began to do what heaven told him to do, and the nations were afraid. Because Nahashtan had no idea, Satan had no idea what was going on in that city. But he knew for sure these people were there for a long time. So when Yohanan starts speaking those prophecies in the third chapter of Revelation, then Ahashtan began to do the work. Then he started the whole calendar around the world. He wanted to make sure whatsoever Yohanan said was true. And then we're given dates, we're given time and seasons based upon the seasons from Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. That's how you count time and prophecy. Then, around the world, he went out, and then he had the heavens, and his calculations, and so on and so forth. So then, if you study closely, you find pagan calendars very similar time-wise of 36 months. You find the Hindu calendar, you find the Mayan calendar, and they are out of precision of 36 months. Then you begin to have a clue what went on. Because when the time he entered the city, the time was already counting. However, Nahashtan's time, he had no clue what went on. He had to start a new calendar from the time that Yohanan begins to speak, 36 months later. That's where you find then the original manuscripts ending in 7009, and then he was out of calibration, let's say, until 36 months later. So what's coming in the 21st is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It's not part of the original calendar of the Messiah. Whatsoever had to take place in the expectations that people they have so much in the heavens and so on and so forth. And you have the, uh, you know, the people from these spiritualists and demoniacs, you name it. These spiritualists, let's say, they have an idea what goes on because Nahash and Satan himself, he had put in the spirit, you know, when Yohanan begins to speak. So the whole world was then synchronized with this out of precision 36 months. And then comes December 21st, nothing. Normal day, absolutely normal day. Going to get up in the morning, going to shave. Or then you're going to get up in the morning, put your pantyhose and go to work. Absolutely nothing is going to take place other than 
some sort of alignment of planets and it's absolutely normal. So don't be disturbed. Be at peace because the Messiah said so. And we simply believe what Messiah said. Please stay tuned. Much more coming up. But be aware. Do not be disturbed because the time is not yet. We have another 20 years yet. And a lot is going to take place. Can be sure of it. And the Messiah has taught us. Please stay tuned.